Hey everyone, Rico here, and I've got another Pokemon challenge for you. Today I'm going to see if I can beat Pokemon Platinum with only Rotom. Rotom is infamous for its ability to get stronger by possessing different appliances, which change its appearance and even its type in later generations. For this challenge I'm only going to use the base form of Rotom, as it tends to be weaker than its other forms. Our level up and TM move list isn't too bad, as there's some interesting moves in here, and we actually learn both double team and substitute by level up. I'm actually really looking forward to this, as Rotom is one of my favourite ghost types, and I haven't played Gen 4 in ages. The rules for this challenge are the default, I can only use Rotom in its base form in battle. I can have other Pokemon on the team, but only to use HMs. No items in battle other than held items, and no glitches or exploits. Also shout out to these badasses for guessing the reference in the last video. So to start, I replace Piplup with Rotom, so I can do the whole challenge with it. This ensures that our rival has Turtwig, giving us an additional challenge. Our ability is Levitate, a fantastic ability that grants us an immunity to ground type attacks. Our nature is Modest, meaning less physical attack and more special attack. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better nature. I name it Venkman. If you get the reference, comment down below and I'll tell everyone that you're a badass in the next video. The first two battles with our rival were easy peasy lemony squeezy. We're a ghost type and he only has normal type attacks at this point, so he can't touch us yet. Time to take on Rorik's Rock Gym. I can't use my electric moves against two of his Pokemon, so I have to rely on confusion damage, and our weak physical ghost move Astonish. Partway through the fight with the Geodude I also decided that I should probably start setting up my double teams, as we are really physically frail, plus Cranidos hits like a train, and has Pursuit which is super effective. We also need to hope that Astonish doesn't make his Pokemon flinch, because if we do, then we miss out on confusion damage. We do manage to get the win on the first attempt, but with only 3 Astonishes left. Commander Mars at the Valley Windworks is rough, as a Perugly is a similar level to us, and hits really hard with Faint Attack, which can't miss. She's also faster than us too. Fortunately, I won on my second attempt due to better confusion luck. I took my first shot at Gardenia's Grass Gym after hitting level 29 and learning Ominous Wind, as I doubt I would have had much luck with our weaker moves. I got a few double teams in against Turtwig after confusing it, and we thankfully had exactly enough uses of Ominous Wind to get the win. She got a couple of hits in, but we didn't appear to be in any real danger. After leaving her to Will, I had to deal with Commander Jupiter at Team Galactic's headquarters. Zubat was a one shot, and we thankfully got a crit on Skuntank. Not gonna lie, I was grateful for that, as she could have messed us up big time. The Ghost Gym Leader was an easy one shot sweep. We're faster and have a decent super effective stab attack. Scooby and the gang would be proud. Our rival the Twat returns next, and he is just that. We swept him without taking damage. Only his Grotto used a move, and he just wasted time using Withdraw. Yeah, maybe you should withdraw from training. After getting to Veilstone City, I went straight after the Fighting Gym Leader Maylene and it was as easy as you'd expect. We're immune to fighting type attacks, so the hits she managed to get in did next to nothing. Maybe Maylene should consider a career change. Speaking of which, the twat returns right outside the water gym, and it goes pretty much the same way as last time. That meaning only Grotto lasted more than one turn, and I actually tried to fight back using Bite. But you might as well have been a mosquito biting an elephant. Maybe Crash Awake will give us a better fight. No. Both Gyarados and Floatzer were fried to a crisp in one hit, but Quagsire was a bit more stubborn. He's part ground so our electric moves won't work, and he can lower our speed with Rock Tomb, but all it takes is two ominous wins after Wake used the Hyper Potion. This run is turning out to be easier than I first expected. Speaking of easy, we've got our first battle with Cyrus. Our newly learned Discharge burned him almost as much as what I discharge after a curry. Even so, I know he's a lot tougher in the distortion world, so we better keep on our toes. That said, look who's back. Only this time he actually puts up a fight. We fried Staraptor for Colonel Sanders, but Torterra was an actual terror. We did a ton of damage with Shadow Ball before he sank his teeth into us with a strong bite. We finished him off next round. Floatzel went down as easy as you'd expect, but his new Heracross is a tough one. He hung on from our Shadow Ball and left us with about a quarter of our health after nailing us with a Night Slash, before going down next round. Lastly, Rapidash went down in one critical hit. Okay, looks like he's going to be one to watch out for. 
After clearing our Iron Island, we've got to fight the Man of Steel himself, Byron. Now this is a battle I was dreading. Almost all of his Pokemon are immune or resist all of our attacking types. Thankfully though, I had a big brain moment. Hidden Power. This is a move that varies in type. The biggest issue is that it can be difficult to know what type your Hidden Power is. Thankfully, this Chad right here will tell you. And the Poke Gods have favoured me today as ours is Ground Type. This is perfect. Thanks to this, Magneton was a one shot and thankfully Bastiodon was too. I didn't fancy getting hit by his metal burst. I was expecting Steelix to hang on, but we got another critical hit. We've had some insane crit luck this run. Looks like we've got some world saving to do as we take on Commander Saturn at the destroyed Valor Lake. We wiped the floor with this poser, he barely did any damage. Commander Mars is back for revenge, but we just shut him down just as easily. I probably won't bring up Team Galactic's commanders in future runs if they're this easy. Next up is the Ice Gym Leader Candice. It starts well with us one-shotting Sneasel and Frostlass, but Obama Snow actually gave us a run for our money. We hit it hard with Shadow Ball, and she responds by critically hitting us with her wood. The recoil brings her into red health, as the hail her ability summon brings us to low health too. Thankfully this means that she full restores, giving us two free hits to take her out. Pilus One is out last and we're in rough shape, but thankfully we Oko, leaving this icy gale to warm up to us. As we storm the Galactic HQ we face off against Cyrus, but we bowled right over him in a clean sweep. Our luck goes downhill from here however, as now we have the double battle with the commanders at the top of Mount Coronet, alongside our rival. Combined with this bad move choice, we go down fast. Both of the opening bronzers put up both screens, making them tougher. I take one of them out, but the Skun Tank tanks our moves and nails us with Night Slash. From there we get whittled down quickly. It was a crit though, so let's see if we can win with better luck. And I tried again, but it's just not happening right now. I need to take out the Bronzongs before they can set up their screens. Maybe if I replace Discharge with Thunderbolt for more power. Turns out getting Thunderbolt was the answer. Thanks to this, I'm able to take out the Pokemon I attack in one hit, while my rival mostly wastes time. There's a reason I called him Twat. Oh well, time for Cyrus. His entire team was a one-shot sweep. He could have done some serious damage, but the bad guy with arguably the biggest ambitions in the series turns out to be small time next to one tiny Rotom. Now that the world has been saved, I can get back to what's important, becoming the Pokemon Champion. Finally, we take on Volkner, the Electric Gym Leader. Shockingly, he actually gave us a hard time. Jolteon hung on from our attack and paralyzed us with Thunder Wave. He healed with a Hyper Potion before hitting a weak Charge Beam and going down in two hits. Luxray also hung on from our attack and brought us to half health with Crunch. He brought us into red health with another attack as we lost a turn to Paralysis. He finished us next round. At last we have an actual challenge. I tried again holding a Cherry Berry, but we didn't even need it. Turns out Jolteon was in a damage range, as this time Shadow Ball one shots. Luxray did hang on and deal a big chunk of damage, but on the turn he healed, we one shot him with a crit. Matter of fact, we even got crits on Electivire and Raichu. That's insane. I've never had this kind of luck in a Pokemon game. GG, Volkner. Before we can challenge the Elite Four, our rival wants one last fight. Storaptor goes down in one hit, as you'd expect, and out comes Torterra. We bring it into red health with a Shadow Ball, while his Leaf Storm brings us down to about half. To my amazement, he doesn't heal and we take him out on the next turn. Both Floatzel and Heracross went down in a single hit, but now out comes the biggest threat, Snorlax. This guy hits hard and has insane health and special defense. Surprisingly, our first Thunderbolt brings him down to about a quarter of his health, while his Crunch leaves us with only 33 HP. Our second Thunderbolt thankfully finishes him off. I'm not gonna lie, that was close. First of the Elite Four is Bug user Aaron. This was easy however, as half of his team is weak to Thunderbolt and everyone went down in a single hit. Gotta say I'm grateful for that as Drapion could have really messed us up. Next up is Ground Trainer Bertha. She wasn't so easy. We bring Whiskash down to a sliver with Shadow Ball as she sets up a Sandstorm. She heals so we take her out with two more hits. Hippowdon however seals our fate by hitting us with Yawn. We did take it out, but we fall asleep as soon as Inferior Rhydon comes out. From there, we don't wake up in time and get whittled down by her attacks on the Sandstorm. I tried again holding a Chesto Berry. We get back to her third Pokemon, but this time she nails us with Rock Wrecker. Why didn't she do that last time? I equip Choice Specs as a held item. 
This boosts our special attack by 50% in battle, at the cost of only being able to use one attack. Thanks to this, we one-shot her entire team like it's nothing. Third is Fire Trainer Flint, yet another one-shot sweep. Interesting how a single held item can make such a drastic difference to your performance in battle. Fourth, Psychic Trainer Lucian. But you know how this goes, he's weak to Ghost and we've got a super effective stab attack and choice specs. He was a complete pushover. Finally, we're up against Pokemon Champion Cynthia. I can't use choice specs here, as her team is tanky enough to survive and take us out. I actually had to resort to double team and a citrus berry. But even this took ages before I could get an attempt where we didn't die to her spiritomb. This isn't foolproof, as some of her mons do hang on and can deal massive damage. I was actually surprised when her rose raid managed to land toxic, but we did eventually manage to pull through. Well that run was certainly interesting. I was surprised as to how easy most of that was, only to be brick walled by two of the ending bosses. I hope you guys enjoyed this run as I loved it. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future challenges as I'd love to hear them. Be sure to throw your dusk balls at the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to join me for the next challenge. And until next time, cheers.